everyone, Mr. Erdreich here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom 3D printed poppets using the Onshape CAD program. So we're going to start by making a sketch on our top work plane. And right now I just have my work planes hidden, so it's a little bit easier to see me working here. So I'm going to click on my top work plane. I'm going to make a new sketch. And I want to make a shape for the actual poppet. And in Onshape, you can easily import an image. So if you press this plus button, you can upload an image. And then you can insert either a vector type file, like a DXF or DWG, which could actually be an outline, or just even a JPEG or an image file that you can then trace over if you wanted to. I'm gonna keep this nice and simple. And I'm actually just gonna draw a large letter E that's gonna be about four inches wide by five inches tall. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is just create my E here using some basic shapes. Okay, so I have my basic E that I drew using my shapes. Now I can just name my sketch base and we're gonna go ahead and extrude this to be whatever I want the first layer of my filament print to be, which is 1.5 millimeters. So we don't want this to be too thin. So this is not going to be the wall of our poppets, but I find that 1.5 millimeters makes a good uh, extrusion for my first layer. Uh, so I just set this to be whatever I'm going to make my first layer in my slicer. And that way it's just going to print one layer of filament here down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a border or a series of borders, depending on your design. If you've ever looked at normal poppet, uh, they'll normally have some type of outer border and then borders that'll go across each row to kind of keep it nice and strong. So I think for this shape, I'm just going to do an outer border. So I'm going to use the offset tool to create a border that is uh, two millimeters or so. And that's going to give us some nice rigidity into our shape. I can then extrude this to be like 0.2 inches, which I think would be a nice amount. And again, that's just going to add some good rigidity here. Now, before we actually make the poppets, we're going to make outer rings. So these rings are going to support the poppets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new sketch on my E. I'm going to name this rings. And I'm going to first draw myself a center line that goes inside of this first upper part of the E, which is going to act as our first row. And then using the circle tool, I'm just going to make a circle that is 0.75 inches. Uh, I'm going to pull it away from the edge. And I also want to give myself a center line to work with, which will be important for the extrusion process, which we'll get to later. Now that I have this circle, I'm going to use my linear pattern tool to pattern the circle with the center line. And it looks like I can fit four columns like so, just make it nice and even. And let's see how many rows we can fit. Um, five rows, five rows in this shape. So I'm just gonna pull all these to fit. Looking at my center lines, making sure everything's nice and even. And perfect. I just double click to confirm. And we gotta delete a few of the overlapping shapes, not that one. Good, uh, and then the only thing I wanna do is actually, I want these E's to be a little bit closer, so that way it gets closer to these pieces, just to kind of even it out. So I'm gonna save my ring sketch, I'm gonna go back into my base sketch, and I'm just gonna change this measurement to change my base here just to pull these a little bit closer. I think I'm actually gonna go even a little bit farther. Yeah, I think that looks much nicer. Great, okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to revolve these rings into spheres. So using the revolve tool, I can click on a half circle and I can click on my center axis and then it goes ahead and it turns it into a sphere. Now, I don't wanna go all the way around. So I'm gonna say uh, one direction and 180 degrees, making sure that I go vertically. And for now, these can be merged. So I'm actually gonna leave it set as add. I should be able to do an entire column at a time by clicking on all of the half faces because they all use the same center line. If I try to do another column, it's gonna to try to revolve around the single center line. So that's not gonna work. 
So I'm going to have to do four revolves for the different columns here. Okay. Now, the rings aren't going to actually be full circles. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new work plane. So I'm going to offset a plane that's going to cut these rings. And I want to cut them just a bit above my first layer. So if I bring this down, I'm going to go to about the halfway point around my first layer. So my offset distance, if I did a wall of 0.2, I'm going to offset just 0.1, which will put me at exactly halfway on this wall. Then on this plane, I'm going to very simply make a box that encompasses my cylinders here. I need to make sure that it doesn't encompass any of my wall. Which I suppose I could have just taken a outer shape, but so be it. And I'm going to, if I go back to my shaded view, remove the tops of these cylinders. So now they are just little rings. And why didn't I just make cylinders? Well, I wanted them to have the same taper that the poppet's gonna have, which is why I revolved them first. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll make a new sketch and I'm gonna make inner rings on all of these circles. And these inner rings are gonna be 0 0.8 millimeters because my nozzle diameter is 0 0.5 millimeters and I want it to just be a little bit more than that because what's going to happen is I'm going to extrude this and because it's a taper it's actually going to get thinner the closer it gets to the poppet. Now I'm doing this to actually allow the poppet to flow in and out nice and smoothly but also to stop the poppet from ripping so that way there's some reinforcement where there needs to be and also some thinner filament where there doesn't need to be. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this to all of my cylinders. Uh, if I was organized, I would know exactly what my pattern was, but I'm just going to real quick apply this to each one. All right, next we just have to extrude this. So I'm going to click on each of my inner rings and we are going to remove material up to our base. Lastly, we're going to apply a fillet which will round the top. And I should be able to round the width of this overall diameter here. So if I apply a fillet, this top edge to be point. 0.016 inches, like so. All right, so we have our rings. And again, these the job of the rings are just to provide reinforcement to the actual poppets themselves. So the pops are going to be very similar to how we actually drew the original rings. So I'm going to create an offset within my rings from the base of the ring, and I'm going to offset inwards 0.8 millimeters. And again, what I'm doing is I'm adding three millimeters to the diameter of my nozzle. So for a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, 0.8 is a really good width to be using for these different lines. And now I'm just going to repeat that for my other pops. Next, I need to add center lines. So I'm just going to draw my center line and I only have to do one per column. Now we're going to go ahead and revolve. Just like before, we can revolve an entire column at a time. So I'm going to click on an entire column face and a center. Just like before, we don't want to go full. We want to go 180 degrees. What's different, though, is we do not want to add. We need to keep these as new shapes so we can work with each pop individually for the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of my columns. Okay, next what we need to do is we need to hollow out these pops because right now they're solid half spheres. So I'm actually going to hide my base. So all I have are my pops. 
And using the shell tool, looking at the pots from the bottom now, I can actually shell these shapes. And I'm gonna do it with a wall thickness of one millimeter. So the reason that I'm doing one millimeter is because my extruder nozzle is 0.5 millimeters. So this means that I essentially have two extrusions for each poppet wall. When I tried to do it at just 0.5, it was too thin. You punch right through it. When I tried to do it at 1.5, it was too thick. When I did anything in between, so if I tried 0.8 or if I tried 1.2, because the extruder was 0.5, I was getting inconsistent results for how tiny these were. So I found that when I kept it just a good one millimeter, double the width of my extruder, it worked beautifully. And I had a really extru smooth extrusion and a strong enough poppet material. So now what we have is we have our poppets hollowed out. The next thing I need to do is I actually need to open the bottom so that way you can actually see the poppets from the bottom. And to do that real quick, I just need to draw some circles that are the exact same size as my poppets. So I'm gonna make a new sketch for our openings, and I just need to drop in some circles that align with our poppets. So I'm gonna use this Use Projection tool just to copy the outer edge of each poppet onto this new sketch. Now if I hide everything but the base, we can see we have these circles. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to open these circles by removing straight through. Now when I turn my poppets back on, we can see the poppets from the bottom. And we can also see that there is a shelf or a gap. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to extrude each poppet up to the base, so this will even it out. Like so. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say add material and merge with all, which will merge the poppet with the base. So now that I've set this to be extruding up to the bottom face and merging with all, I should be able to click on each poppet and then each poppet will extrude and merge. All right, now we have a nice solid single part poppet. Now I experimented with putting different fillets and chamfers and stuff on these bottom edges to smooth it out, but what I found that while it did make it be a bit more smooth, it ended up just causing for failed prints. So either the print would slip because there wasn't enough bed contact or it would just rip straight through. So as a quick recap, measurements that matter. All of your spaces, so whether it's your um, your outer rings and the gaps between your rings, all of these spaces give yourself 0.3 millimeters bigger than what your nozzle is. So this gap, my nozzle is 0.5 millimeters, this gap is 0.8 millimeters. So I'm giving myself a 0.3 millimeter buffer to stop from over extrusions or any misprints. And then the wall thickness of my poppet is one millimeter, which is double the thickness of my nozzle. So that way I'm doing exactly twice the thickness of my nozzle per poppet wall. Next. To print this guy out, I'm going to export this and save this as the E pop it and then drop it into my slicer. Now I get into greater detail with actually slicing your model to have successful prints that correspond with our design as well as selecting the optimal TPU filament and tuning and calibrating your printer in my full 3D printed poppets video and instructables post which you can find below. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to check out my other ones and subscribe to my channel as well as stay tuned for future projects on my social media, on my YouTube channel, and on my Instructable post. Happy popping.